What's up, it's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're blasting Long Island, New York's suffocation effigy of the forgotten fucking brutal New York death metal. Definitely one of my favorite death metal records of all time and my favorite personal dancey grave piece. I love it. The whole biomechanical savagery that's going on here is great. And I even got Seagrave to sign my CD version. I have my own personal Suffo monster. Fucking sick. But after this classic Effigy of the Forgotten, Suffocation went back into the studio in 1993 and came back with this muddy mess that was breeding the spawn. And over the years, I kind of avoided the CD version of this after I first got it and was like, oh man, it sounds like somebody put a wet blanket over it when they recorded it. What the fuck? Like, and I know the band wasn't happy with the original recording as starting with Pierce From Within, they started re-recording tracks from this album on every record after. But... The re-recording of Breeding the Spawn on Pierce From Within is probably my second favorite song from Pierce From Within, aside from Thrones of Blood. But the vinyl version of Breeding the Spawn, holy fuck, this sounds awesome. And I'm holding it as a 1993 classic. To me, there's three early time periods in death metal that are very, very important. You have 1989, 1991, and 1993. 1993, you had like Infester, Demi Lich, etc. And 1989, you had Autopsy. 91, Suffocation. There's so much sick shit in those three time frames when it comes to the classic days of death metal. But when it comes to studio recordings and whatnot, I understand the stress and I understand you wanting to be on your, you know, highest level of playing and everything. And sometimes you don't realize that you actually recorded something special. Something that's going to withstand time itself. And I feel like that's something that Vehement Thrower did so well here on this 1993 Lost Gem, I Come in Peace. Now Vehement Thrower plays some totally bulldozing death grind for fans of Blood, Repulsion, and Xysma. I hear a lot more blood than Repulsion and Zizma, but holy shit. From the cover art alone, you would think this would be, you know, something that everybody would have in their collection. But that wasn't the case until recently. This is the first time this was ever properly released on vinyl and CD. Beforehand, Baron Records did a cassette version which they actually have a photo of the layout of, and that was the only release of this band. And the only release of I Come In Peace was on tape, and it sadly was lost to time as the band, they felt like the recording was a failure. Even though they were completely crushing every other band in the Polish scene at the time. Like... I Come In Peace is no fucking joke. It starts off with, first off, a beautiful piano intro on different states of consciousness, which was a very kind of typical death metal thing to do, especially in 1993. But this is very, very organic sounding, yet it crushes. And that's why it's so fucking awesome. And I just, you know, tip my hat to YK at Nuclear War Now. I don't know how he finds some of these ancient recordings. Same with, like, Ken and Ken's Death Metal Crypt. But Ken has, like, physical demos of some of the gnarliest bands at their earliest stages. So just 
fucking hails to anybody that, you know, keeps the history of legit underground music alive and well. Because this probably would have 100% been lost to time if it wasn't reissued. And I, I can't thank Nuclear War Now enough for reissuing such a bad-ass fucking record and putting it into ears that otherwise probably never would have heard this bad boy. And it's a shame that the band broke up and they even had a m member pass away in 1995, but they had already broken up by then. They started another band, an industrial band called Fear, and... Uh, Here's a little blurb from The Theory of Noise Zine. In 1993, I Come In Peace was the best thing that was released in the Polish underground. It was like a tank powered by high-octane fuel that crushes everything in its way. That was the time they crushed even the most known bands whose popularity came from the fact they were written about everywhere, but the music was weak. That sounds fucking familiar. Because death metal goes in cycles, as some of you will find out in a couple years. But, I Come In Peace brought freshness, brutality, and imaginativeness. I don't know if that's a real word, but who the fuck cares? And... At the time, I was creating a zine and a comp tape, and I knew I had to have them. After the release of I Come In Peace, the band became inactive, mutually blaming themselves for the unsuccessful I Come In Peace session. Continuous misunderstandings and different visions brought the band to an end after its existence in the last quarter of 1993. That shit's a fucking shame, but yo... It happens. Like, if you're in a band and you go into the studio, you better make sure you guys are all on the same page and whatnot because unless you're recording it yourselves, that shit costs money. Or you're going to end up owing a record label money and you don't want to do that. Trust me. You want to pay for it yourself if possible. And... Trust me, your drummer might be like, yo, I have a new fill for song number three. Is it cool if I go in? And No, unless he's paying for it. No. And I hated when we would have to punch something in to where when I recorded with my band, our second album, we purposely, well, the idea was to do a cassette release and... Trying to release a cassette in 2006, it wouldn't have worked. It really wouldn't have. It would have been looked at as a novelty item. Like, I was already using obsolete technology to do our, like, promo stuff. Like, while we were waiting for the masters of our second full length, I made a 3-inch CD. And it had two new songs and a rehearsal track on it and you couldn't play it on your car stereo you had to sit at home and listen to it and that was the way I wanted like our music to be heard I didn't want you to put it on your computer I wanted you to you know actually sit down put it in and enjoy it and it's one of the reasons why nowadays I feel like I just have such a respect for physical media after a couple of years of totally disrespecting, you know, the formats of physical music and using programs like Mediafire, RapidShare, all that bullshit after, you know, having to sell my collection not once, but twice. And then having a collection get stolen, like, I was so fucking sick of it. Like, how many times could I buy Dissection the Somberland? Like, come on. But what I have in my hands is a piece of European death history. 
And yes, there's very much grind elements on here, but at the end of the day, Veminent Thrower, in my opinion, play some fucking gnarly death metal that just happens to have a nice grind touch to it. It is very much bulldozing, not in a disgorge bulldozing way, but it definitely has those blood vibes to it that make it very, very European sounding, yet much enjoyable, and I fucking love it. From the piano intro to the gnarly, gnarly kind of skit that opens up the B-side of things, Veminent Thrower, I Come in Peace is everything you could possibly want out of a early, mid-90s death metal, death grind release, especially coming out of Europe. It's a shame that I Come in Peace was kind of lost to time for all these years to where it's finally getting a proper release and probably getting a proper fan base outside of the tape trading scene from the early mid 90s. So it's fucking amazing and it would be awesome if the surviving members, you know, would come together at a festival or something like that and play I Come In Peace in its entirety along with the Worm EP. That would be fucking sick. But Veminent Thrower, I Come In Peace, bad ass classic Polish death grind on Nuclear War Now. And I'm sorry if I said the band's name wrong. Veminent Thrower, Vehement Thrower. I don't really know what it properly is, but... I know it properly kicks fucking ass. So if you're a fan of death metal with some grindcore elements, definitely get into Veminent Thrower, I Come in Peace, reissued finally on Nuclear War Now Productions. Hails to YK, you're the fucking man for reissuing this. Awesome, awesome shit from Poland in 1993. That cover art, like I said, so fucking sick. So good. And we were blasting Suffocation 1991's Effigy of the Forgotten. Fuck yeah. We need Frank back. But in the meantime, the records will hold me over. I love Suffocation. Look at Frank's Trump shirt. It's fucking sick. But, yeah. Suffocation, Effigy of the Forgotten. Death Metal Classic. And I feel the same way about I Come In Peace. This is one of those albums that is definitely a classic. And I'm glad that, you know, in 2020, it has its audience. And... I highly suggest checking this out. I'll put a link in the video description. Veminent Thrower, I Come In Peace on Nuclear War Now Records. Amazing reissue. And as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Who? <laughs>